Welcome college basketball fans to the Full Court Press Podcast with LT and Sammy D. This is the podcast that brings you legendary stories from college basketball's golden era and dives in deep with the current analysis of today's game. Get ready for the most energetic and entertaining college basketball podcast around. Let's get it. Hello, and welcome to another Full Court Press Podcast, a college basketball experience sponsored by no one, listened by no one, watched by no one, except for you and I. You are not alone. I am here with you. You are not alone. Finally (laughs) got our next guest to finally come on the podcast you've been excited for this we've uh we've thrown his name out there throughout the uh the, throughout the past season and um i think our listeners were were ready for him you know we had his predecessor on twice right yeah no, we've only had him once we're getting him on again i did i okay all right, yeah. Yeah. All right. thanks for thanks for participating knowing what the hell we're doing every week yeah, for some reason, I thought we had uh, Coach D on um, during our uh, um, March Madness show, but uh, they were on. Um, now I'm thinking about it. They were on a hot run, and he was hard to get a hold of. So yes, yes, yes. Very. But I will. Run. But I will tell you one of the, my surprise. Like I, call, I picked this team, and they showed up. They showed up. They showed you up. Did. Duke, I, I, gave, I gave you a Duke lot of Queens. shit. Season two. Yeah, Duke he, or what did you call him? Drew Kane. The Drew Kane. It's the Drew Kane show over in um Pittsburgh now. Yeah. yeah. And Drew Drew Joyce the third. Um everyone's been waiting to see when he's gonna get his first uh, head coaching job. He has it now. And um yeah, I mean his history, you know, coming into the public eye in high school at St. Vincent St. Mary's out of Akron and then Going into play for Akron, um, setting records at Akron, and then um, his playing career, a really a, a long playing career overseas. Yeah. You know, usually you see guys kind of dabble a couple years. He was a German legend. <laughs> like when you look at the he was over there, the Hasselhoff like, of point guards. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, he at the time he set the. Shit, uh, we didn't talk German about league. David Hasselhoff. I know, I know. It's all good. It's, it's all good. But you know, he is the all-time leading assist uh, leader in the history of German professional basketball. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I mean, no, I mean, crazy. no, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, he's like, yeah. I mean, his basketball IQ is off the charts. And I mean, you can, I mean, he's a pass first point guard, which is um, kind of more old school, which plays really well under the college game. And then, um, Yeah. He came in, helped Dennis Gates, who I know we're both big fans of. Um, and, um, I'm not they, anymore. He won't get his SID. Won't get back to us about an interview. He had, he had a tough season, man. It's uh, he's, he has, says, I have a tough day every day. A tough day today. <laughs> but what, uh, what, shit. what Dennis Gates and the crew over there, um, like Drew Joyce, like I mean, what they built over a couple of years at Cleveland State, that was impressive. And, yeah, um, yeah, they're fun to watch. They almost beat yeah. the ball. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, then Drew joins um, his one of his mentors, you know, um, hey. over over in Duquesne, Coach uh, Keith Dambrot, and hey, really good guy and everything. Yeah. And um, yeah, you pick them to win the A10 um, in January, I think it was um, when we did kind of our pre-conference no. show, and I was like, yeah, you're you're so full of it, LT. And then they had a several bad weeks in a row right where they were just okay. like you said they, they were trying to find their identity i gave you a bunch of shit for it and you're like man it's all good and then man the duke showed up at the end of the season that was and fun was, and it was fun and i told them told yeah. them this because i was at the uh, pittsburgh regional and they're playing as i think the oakland kentucky game was going on i mean they would show it and people were just going berserk. I mean, people were wearing yeah, Duke shit to the, the game. Other end of the country, I think, right? Oh, so, yeah. It was it was awesome. They beat BYU. I was really yeah. hoping they'd pull it out against Illinois, but Illinois was just mm-hmm. a different level. But I'm excited to see what Coach uh Coach Drew's gonna do, Coach Joyce, um, or as I call him Drew. Um, 
I actually got his wife into the act too. I actually texted her a little bit before to ask some questions. That was that, that was a nice little surprise, you know, during our little um, shot clock session. Um, yeah, he didn't was, like that. He this he is the was, first time that you yeah. went to the coach's wife and asked for answers as well to compare. Yeah. So. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, and and he didn't like that I was the one asking the questions for that. He's like, really? <laughs> I'm like, Come on, man. No, no, the- like, he he's a good dude, man, and he is going to do really well during his first head coaching tenure. And I mean, he's he's already built a legacy out there. And I mean, he's an Ohio legend. You know, just the whole Joyce name is yep. really synonymous with like Ohio basketball, um, especially like what his, uh, what his father and his brother have accomplished along with drew. Um, so it's, um, it's a powerhouse family for sure. And, yeah. They're good people um, too. I've gotten yeah. to know them over the years and yeah. his brother cam won his first state championship. His dad's a great dude. I actually ran into his dad at golf galaxy a couple of weeks ago. He's buying a new golf bag. Yeah. Um, yeah, but just, just great, great people. Um, you know, hardworking, uh, and you know, they just, they do it the right way. So it'll be interesting to see. And it was actually one of the first times I talked to him about LeBron because I, I mean, I've known Drew for seven years, eight years. And I, I don't, I mean, I've been at, uh, birthday parties, baby showers with them, you know, him and his family. Um, I've been to his parents' house. I've been to his house multiple times. You just don't talk about it, but I had to bring up the whole rumors of Bronny and and potentially Bryce going to Duquesne. Well, it's funny because it's like when I don't think it was a surprise when Coach Dambrot like announced his retirement, right? And I think he announced mm-hmm. it before the NCAA tournament, after they yes. won conference, I think. So in between yes. the conference win yes. and the NCAA tournament, yep. and um. Nobody was surprised that, like, when it became official, that like Drew was going to get that job. You know, like no one's like everyone was just kind of waiting for it to happen. In my mind, right? No. Um, I mean, Drew was the associate head coach, and you know, mentored by Keith Danbrot for several years. And then, you know, just with the background that we've already mentioned, it was just kind no. of a given in my mind that he was going to be the next one to take the role. <clears throat> and um, called that one too. You did, yeah. Um, but you refused to say it on air. Um, so that's true. Well, because I, I knew something, it doesn't, it doesn't right? Count. It got to be count. respectful. I knew something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's all good. But um, yeah, and so when Coach Joyce had the official role um, of head coach, and everybody knows that you know Coach Joyce and LeBron are like best buddies, right? They have been for yep. you know three decades, and. Um, Everyone's like, oh, Bronny entered the transfer portal. He's going to be choosing between Ohio State and Duquesne, right? <laughs> and, Duquesne, yes. And, uh, and I think it was fun. And, you know, Coach Joyce even kind of laughed it off as well. You know, he's like, yeah. I don't know. And it's like, I mean, I, I think the real question is, like, where is, is where is he going to be in the draft? And is, is Bronny going to come back to college or not? You know? Yeah. Um, and a lot's going to be decided in the next 30 days here. So, but um, – yeah, it's just an interesting element to the whole coaching thing, you know. I mean, not I'll, I'll put it this way: not I can't think of another college head coach that can get away with throwing chalk in the air, and uh, and it be okay, <laughs> you know. Like that's that's I a like trademark. That. That's a trademark, you know. And 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 only he said, your he, he said he invented it though. He did. He did. He did. He joked about that a little bit, but but that that's a trademark move that I feel like nobody else on the planet could really get away with that I can think of, you know, like, so it's, uh, it was a fun little thing. And, you know, I, I do feel that, uh, Drew's going to do fun stuff like that just to keep the, uh, the Duquesne Dukes men's basketball program top of mind for everybody. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, you're definitely going to see LeBron kind of cheering him on as he has throughout his whole career and vice versa. You know, so yeah, he'll be at games and stuff like that. <clears throat> so let's get let's get on this episode with uh, Coach Joyce. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. We love five stars, especially Sammy gets really excited. I get so excited uh, with five stars. It's like yes. my birthday present every single. Yeah, and week. then you get angry with like the one star we got. You were still pissed about it. 
Well, they didn't give their name. I don't, or they didn't give a reason. So it's all good. No. We, we can move on. We can go. <laughs> on. I, I don't. I don't want to ruin the episode. But uh, yeah, this yeah. The, this interview with uh, Coach Joyce was awesome. I mean, yeah. he's taken over at the Bluff in Duquesne, yeah. and he has been incredibly active since day one as head coach in the transfer yeah. portal, as well as getting guys back. He talks a little bit about that. Talks about his coaching yeah. staff, and then he at the later on the podcast he even gives us his top five starting lineup for. From uh, guys who grew up in Ohio, which was yeah. uh, which was fun to kind of go through some yeah. of those names. So yeah. let's, let's get All it, right. LT. Let's get it. Let's go after it. Enjoy the podcast. All right, we've got the new or the the most recent named, recently named head coach of Duquesne, aka Duquesne men's basketball. We got Coach Drew Joyce joining us from a sunlit office in probably lovely Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Welcome to the Full Court Press Podcast, a college basketball experience. What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me on. Uh, I see you, you you haven't learned how to pronounce our you know our university yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm hearing rumors that uh, the success you're expected to have the next couple of seasons is going to be called Drew Kane. We've been seeing some signs and and some and some stuff <laughs> about that. <laughs> That's been a pretty cool nickname, and you know I did not get that started. By the way, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, but it has. No, been, nor did you. Uh, yeah, nor did you do the thing. You didn't start that either. The... Well, I'm taking full credit for that. That that you know as you should, as you should. Once you yeah. somebody's signature, I think it's mine now. So yeah. So is that for when you guys sign a recruit or what when do you do that? Yeah, it's it's really been, you know, to engage our fans, our fan base more than anything about, you know, exciting news on the way. And it's been centered around re- recruiting. Um, in the, in this aspect, and it's, um, you know, it, it it it's caught on uh, to more than just our fans, but um, for the followers of Duquesne basketball, they've been really excited about it, you know. So um, hopefully, we've gained some some new followers in in the process that are interested in, in Duquesne and what we what we have going on. So, but I definitely wanted uh, our our followers, our season ticket holders, to be excited. Um, about um, our new commits and it it they have been you know the response to you know um, the commitments of our, our our new student athletes has been has been pretty um, well taken and um, our guys have enjoyed it. Yeah. So talk yeah. a little bit about some of these new commits. You've been pretty busy since kind of taking over the head coaching. You know, you got Maximus Edwards from George Washington, Alex Williams, Cam Crawford, Jashawn Corbett, Trey Dinkins. Like, I mean, you've been active out there and it seems like you've got <laughs> some success with some of these guys, huh? It seems like a long list, right? Um, I mean, it's, uh, it's shorter than a lot of other programs. <laughs> yeah, out there there's some teams that have 13 <laughs> new players, so. But uh, yeah, yeah I'm I mean, fortunate, that, right? like kind of putting this uh, putting this program together under your name now as the head coach, because you also have a lot of returning guys too, right? Right. I think it was important with with the incoming class that we brought in that um, we really tried to have the emphasis on how do we continue to build uh, a good a good basketball team. How do the characters mix and the skill sets and talent? Not not with the focus of we graduated this, we lost this, make sure we find that person in, in that exact role. Um, for, for us, it was, uh, did we, did we like the character of the young man? Do we think their skill set and talent would, would match and mesh? And, um, did we think that winning and being a part of a team was important to that person? Uh, you know, that was really the basis of how we so- decided to select the players that we did. Um, and I think uh, I'm high on everyone that we brought in. They they check those boxes, right? They check boxes for us. I know when you're a recruit, you're looking at the coaching staff and, and university as what boxes do they check. But uh, we made sure that they, they checked the boxes for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The one guy I really like is uh, the gentleman from George Washington. Maximus he, Edwards, man. He, he, he's, he was an A-10 rookie of the year a couple of years ago, man. He was, yeah, he's a ball like, player. Yeah, yeah no, Max Max is a – I mean, he's shown it, all right? I think um, there's something to be said about the way he's been able to perform already 
in the Atlantic 10 Conference, um, you know, and uh, he, he he's proven that he can play at a, at a very high level. And we're excited uh, to, to have him here a part of our program and see what we can build with him. He's, he still yeah. um, wants to challenge himself, um, you know, that he was adamant about that. And he still has some things uh, that he's chasing after. You know, he, he wants to, you know, see how far he can take basketball career wise. Yeah. And, you know, in the process of that, how much can he become a winner? Yeah. It, isn't it isn't it crazy though with recruiting now that like there's a whole bunch of players transferring within conference? I mean, think about when you played uh, like a hundred years ago, and I'm older than you. Can I I can say that? <laughs> um, like, can you imagine you thinking of transferring to like Kent State or I'm trying to think who else? Um, who else was really good back when you were playing? I'm just trying to think. Miami, Ohio was pretty yeah pretty good too. Yeah, can you Ohio. imagine like? Yeah, well, oh you yeah, oh shit, oh you duh. Um can you imagine like Coach D you going into his office and telling him you're you're transferring to like OU or Kent State? Man, well the crazy part of that is it happened. Uh, it wasn't me. <laughs> I wasn't <there. laughs> uh, I like my role, so I was good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um but we had a player that actually transferred in conference. Um probably the only player during my four years there that transferred out um and he transferred in conference to ohio and it was like he did what that's forbidden um instantly you know <laughs> instantly you become a target right uh, especially during during that time but today is it's is totally different um the transfer market is very similar in ways to um what you see not necessarily in the NBA, but if you were to really understand and pay attention to what happens in Europe basketball wise, this is common. This is very, very common um, where guys yeah. move teams within the league within a year and they can be in over the course of five years, you can see them on four different teams. Um, it just so happens that, uh, you know, I think the tradition of college is, um, is struggling or it's taking a little bit longer to grasp maybe what the mentality is right now. The tradition has always been, you know, we've seen, we've seen players spend four years and really, you know, embody what the university is, what the program is. And, you know, I won't say that's not the case anymore. I just think uh, it's going to happen uh, in a different format. Yeah, yeah. And what, what is he, Sam? Just I, wait. You know, that, hey, Sam. I, I, we didn't mention this yet. He knows a little bit about European basketball. He is the all-time career yeah. assist leader in Germany. Yeah, Bundesliga. Three Deutsch. Yeah, yeah. Do you think so? Do you think your experience? Ambition. Uh, Ambition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think your experience over in Europe is uh, going to help you, like as you kind of navigate the future of Duquesne and really navigate what's happening with college basketball right now? You know, I think I think that's that's what experiences are for. Um, you know, for you to to take to take with you, be able to, you know, be aware of what happened in that moment. Um, self self advise and see how you can do it better, how you can share it. Uh, so, I'll definitely take um, the experiences that I learned through my time as as a player. In, in in the four different countries that I spent. Um, but uh, I played for, I think, a total of 10 teams, maybe nine or 10 teams. I lost, I lost count. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, if I was to count them, I really would have to sit, sit here, concentrate yeah. and <laughs> really think, man, I was here, but nevertheless, um, you know, I, I, I've, I do that with all of my experiences, whether it was um, learning the game with my dad at the age of, of seven um, and watching how he digested the game, watching his experiences coming home after wins and losses, um, seeing that how he still gives the same energy and effort into year, I believe, 22 or 23 um, of, of coaching college basketball. The time I spent with Dennis Gates building up a program in 
in his first stint or, you know, being here with Coach Danbrod at the, you know, for his last dance, um, you know, playing for a coach that had over 40 years of experience. I have to pull from from those moments. I know that those things like those instances, they, they rounded me into who I am today. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to make sure I, I'm, I'm Drew Joyce. I'm authentic to myself and um, hold to my truths and do what I believe is best for not only me, but for our program. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so when you talk was, about, like, yeah, when you talk about some of like the mentors that you've had, you know, whether it's, you know, coach Gates or coach, coach D or your father, you know, like who, who have you talked to the most the past month since you've taken over this um, role kind of leaning on for advice? I mean, obviously coach D knows the program pretty well. Um, but is there, is there somebody that you're, you know, you're talking to every day about what you're trying to accomplish there? Yeah. Um, you know, I probably talked to all three of them a lot and, Honestly, I, for different reasons, you know, I, I call my dad just to check on him. Uh, you know, uh, I, I hit Coach Gates to, you know, maybe bounce some things off of him uh, and ideas. Sorry about my light. It's uh, cool. <laughs> I can't fix everything, you know. I'm, I'm working. So <laughs> I got a, a monitor light. I'm sitting in here and it just cuts off every 10 minutes. But uh you know, um, Coach Danbrod is more just to, you know, see how he's doing. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm transitioning, but he's transitioning as well. And I never want to just throw all of my problems or whatever I got to say. I think it's important to see what he's up to, what what's he doing, how is he feeling. So, um, you know, the basketball is the basketball. When I have questions, I'm going to have them. But, um uh, I don't think I got to consume everybody's day with what's going <laughs> on here with me. Yeah. 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 So the coolest experience I had was uh, at the first and second round uh, was in Pittsburgh and you guys were playing BYU and uh, it was crazy because they would show highlights or show the score and the place and, you know, was the PNC bank or whatever it is. PNC arena was going berserk. I mean, it was the coolest thing and it was actually i believe the game was going on right as oakland and kentucky was playing too and i mean it was an awesome experience kind of put into words like i was at a couple games you know i follow you guys because of you know of coach d and yourself and what have you and we had trey and day day on the podcast like i went to a game and i can't remember you played dayton and you guys started off you know pretty well it was close like we were I felt like all year, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just trying to be nice. Uh, but I remember saying to Sam, and I remember coming out of the, the 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 press conference with Coach D. It's like they haven't found their identity, and I feel like it kind of went out through your. And then all of a sudden, something clicked in the A10, and you guys went rolling, and you continued against BYU. Unfortunately, you just didn't have enough against Illinois. Like, what was the moment that you can kind of pinpoint where? things just changed all of a sudden because I feel like it was just like there was a lot of moving parts and all of a sudden it just fit that puzzle perfectly. Yeah. Well, um, first shout out to the city of Pittsburgh. I did get to, I wasn't in the arena while that happened, but I did see those videos and that was, you know, to have the, the city and community support uh, during that game when they weren't even at the game to watch another game <laughs> To have that type of support, that that was awesome to hear about, to visually see through through Twitter and the video. So, um, no shout out to the to the city of Pittsburgh on that one. Um, you know what? I don't think it was a particular point. Um, I think it was a process. Uh, I think it was a process of a, a coaching staff that understood or made sure that we understood what was happening in the games where our downfalls were and the decision to let's keep growing. Let's find a way to find solutions and let's not flip this whole thing over and, and go berserk, right? To be calm in the midst of a storm. And I think it was our players as well as coaches that had to accept accountability and responsibility at a, at an even higher level. And it, it just went game by game. And um, 
if there was one thing that we decided that we were going to hang our hat on each and every day was going to be how competitive we were, the energy and effort we brought, and how well we could defend. Uh, so, like I said, game by game, it started to unfold. And, and you could see our, our, our playing style shift where we knew we had offensive talent and that we could score the ball but we managed the game differently um, to make sure that we gave our defense the best chance um, of getting stops and controlling the game as possible. So, uh, you know, I think the losses, they taught us a lot of lessons. Um, mm -hmm. And through those lessons, we decided to grow instead of become disciplinarians, invoke punishment, um, and criticism, you know, we could have went a whole lot of directions. Um, you know, we could have let coach, let's be, coach, coach, let's be honest. If you were playing at Akron when coach D was coach, you know, 20 some years ago, do you think he would have been the same way? Cause he was pretty fiery back. I mean, he's always been fiery, but he was real fiery back in the day. Oh, his fire never changed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it wasn't for a lack of intensity, right? Yeah. It was for more of a purpose so the intensity was there um the intensity was there from each and everyone in the room we just put more emphasis on this is what we're doing well um this is what we have to correct um so you know would he have handled it differently during my tenure at akron we didn't lose five in a row <laughs> so i don't know <laughs> <laughs> true True, true. So if you look at Coach D's coaching tree, you've got yourself, you got Jeff Broyles at uh Boyles at uh OU, you've got Lamont Paris at South Carolina, you got Shaka Smart at Marquette. It's crazy to think how many head coaches there'll be that have kind of come through the doors. And I know I'm probably missing one or two guys uh as head coaches. What was the biggest how difficult or what was the biggest kind of challenge sitting on that bench with him for the first couple games, being a player under him as point guard for four years, four great years, and then being assistant. Was there any, like any, like, did he yell at you all of a sudden, like you're playing again, but you're on the bench. Like, how was that adjustment? <laughs> always coach D he, he always gives you that look like he's still coaching you <laughs> um so <laughs> that never goes anywhere that's why I told you I'm, I'm not practicing because you're not going to treat me like I still play for you <laughs> um, <laughs> so I didn't practice I didn't practice at Duquesne for two years with direct <laughs> intent. I, I wasn't going to be running suicides for turning the ball over um but I would say um you know, me and him have always had a, a a really good relationship and respect for each other's opinions. Um, whether it was my time as a player or or a coach, and I was able to understand that, hey, he wants he's okay with me speaking my mind and having an opinion. Um, it doesn't mean that he's going to use it. It doesn't mean that I'm right or I'm wrong. Um, and there were some times where the, in the heat of the moment, you know, he would tell me, you know, that I'm wrong and with more in, intensity than maybe in a calm situation. But we always had the ability to understand that uh, the best inter interest of our program is at stake. So whatever we have to do, we're going to get it done. And we never... We never let that disrupt us. So uh, people will tell you, man, me and Coach D, we, we had our battles when I was a player as a coach. But instantly, I can walk up to him, give him a hug, and tell him I love him. And yeah. it's over with. And we're able to move on because we know what each other want. We want to win. We want our guys to succeed and excel. And we just get back to the main thing. Yeah, that's a pretty good answer. We'll take that one, Sam. Yeah, no, that's good, man. For sure. What do you think, LT? 
Oh, if you ask some players, if you ask some of the players, he never yelled at me. That's what they, that's what, that's what <laughs> my former teammates like to say. I never uh, yelled at you. You probably got that out uh, during the early years of your guys' relationship, you know? Oh, yeah. Silly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who, who would you say, is there much difference before, we're going to do a shot clock where I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Did Is there much difference between how your dad coaches and Coach D coaches? Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, um, obviously, but do you see dad, some similarities then? Yes, there, there, there's some, there's some similarities. You know, we've learned from each other. Um, my dad has has a patience, um, and a a level of calm that you're not probably going to see. Like Coach D has patience, but you wouldn't be able to tell. <laughs> 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 You know, that's not what's going to strike you as, oh, that guy's right. got unbelievable patience because he's intense, mm-hmm. he's fiery, he's in the moment. My dad's the opposite. He can be fiery. Um, but when he does take it to that level, you you understand and you know, like, okay, this this right here, this isn't a joke. He means business. Um, so I just think they have a different way of their approach. Um, yeah. I do think their guidance and leadership. Yeah, that's that's what I'm missing, right? <laughs> the clapper. Hopefully, we have an older audience and they know exactly what what that is. Oh, the clapper. Depending on our I'm, listeners, I'm, our right now sponsor. we never know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. There you go. Exactly. Um, so, you say, talk, up, you talked a little bit about, um, you know, your father. I want to talk about your brother as well, Cam. You know, he just he just came off uh, his first state championship with Saint Ignatius. For so, congrats to him. When when you took the head coaching job, is there any talk between you guys as brothers? Like, you guys want to coach on the same sideline one day? Of course, you know that's something yeah. that I've always, you know, um, thought about. Um, shared shared the idea with my brother. Um, you know, who knows if that may happen? I, I do know for him and where he's at, he's in a good place. Yeah. Um, he's enjoying his journey and I would only disrupt that right now. Uh, yeah, so, but, so, so would you be his assistant or would he be your assistant? You know, I have, I have no problem with that going either direction. Um, honestly, um, I, we should ask the Hurley brothers that. <laughs> I think they tried. They tried that, didn't they? Uh, yeah, Wagner. But, it was awesome. Uh, <laughs> for me, you know, I've I've experienced both roles, and um, you know, well, I am experiencing this role now, but um, mm-hmm. I carry the same. I still carry the same uh, mindset of like we're here to serve, and I don't think that's any. I don't think that changes once you just because you change seats. I think, you know, the responsibility sometimes is a little bit different. But if you put me in that assistant role, right, and I was under coaching beside my brother, my job is to make sure that I help him be the best that he can be. Is that yeah. something that was kind of taught in your family? Like you're here to serve. I mean, yeah, obviously we talked about the coaching in your family, but then, you know, I read a recent article, like, you know, two sisters, one's a teacher, one's a life coach. It just seems like everybody who kind of carries your, your family's name, like has some, really believes in their role for service. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it was necessarily taught, but seen, uh, mm-hmm. you know, so, uh, Seeing my dad and my mom, like early on, they were really involved in, in the church and they were they were youth ministers and pastors. So seeing them in those roles, right, those are roles of service. Those are roles of, of teaching. And I don't it's just what you becomes your environment. So, you you know, I don't know if my sisters can pinpoint at those instances right there. Now, my, my old one of my older sisters, she always wanted to be a teacher. So that's always been her thing. Uh, uh, from an early, early age. And, you know, I just think about seeing my mom and dad in those different roles and, and how they have probably played a part in, in my decision making, uh, my character, my values um, of how of how I'm in this position that I am today. Um, 
like when you really look back and say, wow, I really have been surrounded by teaching and education and, and leadership, uh, not only as parents, but in different different aspects of, of their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So who texted you or called you first when some gentleman uh, announced that he was entering the transfer portal from USC? Who text? <laughs> Who text call? Because I mean, okay. when that came out, that I mean, your nephew, Bronny James, was transferring. Like, did you see all the things with like him wearing a Duquesne uniform and a Duquesne jersey and stuff like that? I know you can't talk about if you're recruiting him or not, and I'm not going there, but. Who was the first person that you can remember that you knew saying, oh, it looks like Bronny's coming to Duquesne? Uh, I have no idea. Where where are people getting that from? <laughs> I mean, that was all over. <laughs> I mean, Listen, well, there's that I, assumption, right? There's an yeah, assumption because, you know, talk, you're, that's your guy and stuff. Out there. Yeah, and obviously. Yeah, I mean, what, what, people, what people yeah. assume – they they're just going to assume um, yeah. my staff is just going to continue to work diligently um, to find the right players for our yeah. for our program. But uh, yeah. the assumptions will those will run on forever, right? Um, so I I never yeah. I don't remember anyone texting me <laughs> honestly. Yeah. You're probably just oblivious to it all, right? I mean, because you've, you've been around tweets and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I actually got someone actually text me. I don't know who it was. He says, I see uh, Bryce going to Duquesne. I'm like, sure. Okay. So is Bryce. So is a little sister. You know, Le LeBron's got some eligibility. He's going to Duquesne too. So, yeah, whatever. It is what it is. It is so a nice same. place here. Yeah. You like up it? On the, up on the bluff, baby. Yeah. On the bluff. On the bluff. Yeah, up on the bluff. On the bluff. All right, set them up, Sam. Let's do this. Yeah, so we do a little uh, little segment of the podcast. It's just going to be one or two minutes, you know, unless you want to go into a story. But LT is going to ask you five, six just random questions. First thing that comes to mind, just let it rip. So, awesome. LT, let's get it. Are we letting All LT right. create these random questions? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah I, actually right. have a, uh, I actually have a guest <laughs> answer or two um, that uh, gave me <laughs> their answers. wonder who that could be. All right, uh, one word to describe Duquesne. Awesome. Get it. Okay. One word to describe the Atlantic 10. Competitive. Okay. All right. So if you were a candle, what scent would you be? <laughs> I don't even know sense now that you put me on the spot. <laughs> I only really? think What's about my, my wife's sense and she gets, she loves the fall sense, pumpkin spice, whatever. All right. <laughs> So I asked your lovely wife, who was a part-time cheerleader in high school, I might add, she's going to kill me, but I said it. And she said, I would say he would be a lavender candle because he's always so calm. <laughs> that's a great, see, that's a great, that's a great Got description. It. I couldn't even get to lavender because that wasn't, that just never registered. <laughs> <laughs> Best advice your dad ever gave you regarding coaching? Just... Be, be you, um, be, be Drew. Don't be anyone else. Okay. What about the advice he gave you that he didn't, that you didn't take? The advice he gave me that I didn't take. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cause you got a son. I know, I know how it is. I got two boys. You know, my boys, they don't listen half the time. The advice he gave that I didn't take. I have no yet. I don't know yet to, to. To be determined, I guess. Um, yeah, that was no an interesting question. Okay. okay, well, you know, I'm full of interesting questions, as you know. Uh, <laughs> we're never going to talk after this again, but that's cool. Uh, <laughs> biggest shock in playing pro basketball in Europe? Uh, talent level. Really? They're Better than just, you thought? or um, Just didn't have a, a clue what I was getting into. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And I think the biggest shock is there you're not playing 22 year olds anymore. You're playing 28, 30 year old grown men. men. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Playing, playing any, any, too. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Any funny stories from playing over in Europe? Uh, <laughs> One that's clean. Um, 
Yeah, you know, there's a lot of discretion that. <laughs> um, any funny stories? I mean, to my own default, I was first game of the season, not my first year. I'm probably about five years in. Uh, I'm actually going to return to a team that I formerly played on, right? And Europe is much different. Um, the game is on Sunday, I believe, and I have forgotten my my basketball shoes. I'm a guy who only travels with one pair of shoes. This isn't this isn't uh -huh. the NBA where we have our shoe guy and we got a bag of shoes. And <laughs> if you know anything about Germany, stores are closed on Germany. Oh, yeah. not stores are closed yeah. on Sunday. Excuse me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let alone to try to find a basketball shoe in Germany at the time is is like a a whole nother case in itself. Yeah. Uh, like you you got to be an investigator to find a basketball shoe. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't have any shoes to wear. I get lucky, and a fan we had we called him the super fan. He he's driving to the game. He brings my shoes. He gets them there by game time. Um, I wind up playing terrible and we lost, but <laughs> I was at least happy that I was able to compete in the game and didn't have to wear Air Max uh, to play in yeah. that game. That day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, Lord, that's did, a good one. Did so, you have, did that, you have... so that that happened this year to one of our – well, last year to one of our players, too, by the way. They forget their shoes. Uh -huh. mm. And I immediately I want to get on him, and then I say, "Wait a minute, this happened. <laughs> you can't, you can't say anything. This happened." Yeah. Here. So instead of giving him a hard time, I, I put my arm around his shoulder, let him know it's going to be okay. <laughs> did you tell him you did that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I fessed up. I said, "Yeah, I've been down this road before." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> All right, the song that best describes you. The song that best describes me, um, um, the song that best describes me, I'm all over the place with songs, by the way, you're, you're, you're asking the wrong, like I have a new favorite song week by week, you know? Um, so if you had, so if your first game as head coach, it was next week and you have a walkout song and you get a pick and a walkout walk song. Yeah. Like when they introduced Ju Drew Joyce, first year head coach at Duquesne. What do I'll you just give out? you the song that came to mind. Now it can change, but um, the song that came to mind or instantly was Beanie Siegel, Fill It in the Air. Ah. Oh, okay. The remix. Yeah, that was a good song. Yeah, yeah. Just oh, soothing, real smooth. But it's a, it builds up to where yep. you just feel yes. like, man, it's time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's an old one, too. Uh, so your wife, Lene, said Boss by the Carters. Oh. <laughs> She's got an interesting take on, you know, my life right now. But that is a good song. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So last question. If they did like a real high budget Hollywood movie about you, you like that? A real yeah. But I, I, I perked up. What are we what are we talking about here? <laughs> All right. So if they did an actual like real like not we low budget Hollywood movie it. about you, <laughs> a high budget like big time. Okay, who would play you? Well, the younger version of me, he already did that. So Caleb McLaughlin, boom. Like okay, that's out. who your wife said. But what about the older version of you? Like, what about the now, version, older like version now? of me? Like, you know, because I did. Caleb was, you know, I I grew, so I got. They, I need someone that's <laughs> at six feet. Uh, yeah. The older version of me, um, would probably be played by one of the the greats out there, um, Michael B. Jordan. You know, he he oh, was. That's he a good did one. Such a great yeah. job in Creed. Mm -hmm. you know, I, can I, think, I can see that. Yeah, I think he, you know, size, you know, yeah, he's got, he's got this, he's got a, a stern look, you know, uh, uh, he's got a scowl to him that that can present itself well. Yeah, yeah. See, that was good. I've already That's studied it. Out of you. <laughs> that was yeah. good, man. That was a good one. Can I throw one more question in there, LT? Yeah, let's do it. 
So the Joyce names like become synonymous with Ohio basketball, you know, the past couple decades. And, you know, you, you probably know Ohio basketball pretty well, better than anyone else out there. If there was, a, there's been so many good players that have come out of Ohio, right? Like if you could name your starting five from players who were born, mm. born and raised in Ohio, and you could put together a starting lineup, who would that be? Um, do I go back in generations or do I just take from my time and build it up? You, it, it can start around your time. That's what I, I, yeah, you can get around. Like, I know like Havlicek grew up in Ohio and stuff like that. I like, like, yeah, that's I didn't really old. see him. I really didn't. See yeah. Him. Yeah. So like around your age or are, are people you saw growing up, right? Yeah. Um, there's some good players. Um, ones that have been very, very successful. So, Immediately, I'm going to take myself out of this, right? Although I felt like I was pretty good. Andrew yeah. Lavender from oh, Columbus. Go. Yeah. Was a high state. All American. Yep. Yes. Super talented. Um, proved it on all levels. Like, you know, and I competed against him. We 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 clashed. Gets um, battles. He was good. We had some battles. And I I'll be honest, he 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 won more of those battles than I did. Now I got the last, I got the last one which was important in high school, but you know, mm -hmm. he, I made sure I got extra sleep when I had to go play him the night before, cause I knew it was going to be, it was going to be a long day, but um, I would insert the Malachi Branham, uh, super impressed uh, what he's been able to accomplish. Um, and I'm, I'm not even going to put Braun on this list. Cause that's a, like a no brainer. I'm, I'm, I'm diving deeper. Uh, so is he coming <laughs> the first guy off the beach bench then? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's an easy one. Yeah, he can be <laughs> yeah. he can come off the bench. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, I like Luke that Kinnard, actually. Yeah. Luke Kennard. Uh, yeah. 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 Luke Kennard. Um, Malachi Branham. Um, Darius Baisley. Big time player. Um, guy skipped skipped college, got a New Balance deal as an intern. Still went lottery, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And then at the five, who would I put at the five? Jeremiah Wood. Uh, he was twenty twenty. Shout out to Jeremiah Wood. Let's give him some love. He's still he's still playing. By the way, no, he's not. Yes, he where? Is. Uh, don't know the country. <laughs> <laughs> country unknown. Oh, he's playing. He's playing. I, uh, I think I I do believe he played a lot of years in Finland. I want to say he went back. He either went back to Finland or France this season. Okay. All right. Yeah. So who'd you put as five? Since I rudely interrupted you. I, I had. I went Andrew Lavender. I went Luke Kennard. Malachi Branham. Um. I went. I sh Who? Didn't you pick, pull out Beasley too? Oh no no no, Beasley. There, I I scratched. Him. Oh, okay. I, I oh, know. He's yeah yeah okay. yeah. He, he's a good player. I'm, I'm sorry, but he's got to get scratched. Jared <laughs> Jared Sullinger. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. No yeah. brainer, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. No brainer. Um, yeah. Oh, I got another one. Me and him were teammates for a while, and I I really just appreciate his game because I think about being being a winner is Aaron Craft, right? Yeah. Okay. And I could go either yeah. way with Aaron Craft or Trey Burke. You guys are really putting me on the spot. There's a lot of good players, it's man, hard. and I feel yeah. I feel like I'm doing guys injustice, right? But like like I'm, yeah. I'm shaming well, guys doing, right now. No, I was doing some research on just like guys who came up through the Ohio system, you know, and I was, I was blown away. Cause like, we, we usually reserve that question for like Indiana basketball or like North Carolina basketball, stuff like that. But I was blown away by how many good players have come oh, out of man. Ohio. It's crazy. Yeah. No, we, we, we've got, uh, I mean, there's, there's guys we can go on, man. I got any, Canton, um, Michael red from Ohio. Like, yeah. I mean, it's Yeah. And Jim Jackson, yours. like I told you, man, we're not doing yeah, guys any favor. One of my favorite, uh, he wasn't Ohio. He played at Ohio State. I got to pull it back. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> okay. Scooney Pin, but ah, uh, it's not Ohio guy. Uh, yeah. I'll, <laughs> he I'll transferred. Get. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Sam, finish them off. Yeah, so, Coach, I'm going to turn it over to you, give you the platform. You know, anything you want to share to the uh, Duquesne Dukes fan base, alumni, boosters, like anything that they could be looking forward to um, during the, the first year of Drew Kane. You know, the first so year Drew is your Kane. Yeah, you know, like um, what, what does the Drew Kane era represent? You know, I think we we have turned a corner. We 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 made history. We accomplished a lot. Um, and I keep saying this and I say it to our guys, the mission continues. What we did was great. Um, I'm proud of what we did, but we're not done yet. We're not done yet. And I'm I don't feel any comfort here. I don't feel like I've made it. Um, I don't ever want those things to set in. Uh, we will enjoy our wins. We will learn from our losses as well. Um, but the mission continues. Love it. The mission continues. So you're just going to stick with us one second. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. And don't forget to follow Duquesne basketball. It's going to be an exciting time as they try to repeat as Atlantic 10 champions. So, Coach Drew, thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching the Full Core Press Podcast, a college basketball.